YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs. But you can ask any question you want to, and we answer in a video like this. If you want to be part of it? You can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, we got some great questions as we always do. No wasting time, let's do it. First question came from Gold Morano. He said, Engraven, I loved your video on the dangers of rushing your franchise quarterback from injury. You referenced RG3, Baker Mayfield, Cam Newton, and maybe Andrew Luck as examples. I'm in full agreement with you. Lamar needs to rest and rehab now in order to be 100% by OTAs. Based on your statements, what do you think about using Saquon Barkley as an example in the same manner? My question was... After watching how the Giants rushed Barkley back from ACL, we learned that a running back needs more time to completely heal, right? I'm of the belief that some position players can return from ACL su surgeries a little faster, but a running back needs every once or every ounce of leg strength in order to be effective. He wrote once. I want to make sure y'all know I know how to read. He wrote once, so I know he asked, he meant to put ounce. So that wasn't on me, that was on him. I had to clear that up. It's all up, though. But anyway... <laughs> Said, which is why I believe that the Ravens must not count on Dobbins or Edwards to be the starters of 2022. Alright, um, we answered that question in another video. So, I guess he was thinking that maybe we forgot his questions. No, we answered that question in another video. But anyway, for the first one, um, yeah, it does, I, I, I just, I, we saw the video um, of Lamar Jackson kind of limping uh, in, in his first practice back. Um, and I like I, I did explain it already, but yeah, they just they can't rush him back. You cannot rush him back. Sim simple as that. You cannot rush Lamar Jackson back because it's just simply uh, like we know if, if Ravens could get into the playoffs, anything could happen. Uh, they could possibly win out, beat the Rams, beat the Steelers, and that's that's a lot to ask in itself. But you just you don't want to mess up the long term future of your guy, man. And Lamar himself too he got he got to think long term and i know it's tough as a competitor you think right here right now like i want to be out there helping my boys and i get it but and, and on on the outside looking in it's a lot easier said than done um cuz you know like he just wants to play he just wants to play uh but it's a it's a cruel business man it's a cruel business so if for some reason he turned into damaged goods and the Ravens were like, mm, uh, nah, we're good. And the injury got worse and it just impacted him for the long term. I just don't want to see that, man. I don't want to see that. And I, I just, I don't want to see it for Lamar. I don't want to see it for the Ravens. I don't want to see it for that possible situation. I just don't want to see it because it would just be a really disgusting situation. That could have been avoided. Next question came from Roddy. He said, hey, Raven, not really a question, but I was looking around at the different playoff scenarios for the Ravens, and I found that the Ravens are still in contention for the second seed. <laughs> it is very unlikely for the Ravens to get the second seed, but it's still technically possible. I'll list out the events that would have to unfold for this to happen. There may be other scenarios that result in the second seed. This is just the example that I'm using. So he listed everything that would need to happen this week. Ravens win, Buffalo wins, Chiefs win, Raiders win, uh, Patriots win, Dolphins win, and Detroit wins. Well, that wouldn't have anything to do with our side. Uh, but then for week 18, uh, Ravens will need to win, the Jets will need to win against the Bills, uh, Cleveland will need to beat the Bengals, uh, Houston will need to beat the Titans, Indianapolis could beat the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Dolphins will beat the Patriots, the Bucks. That that ain't got nothing to do with us either. Because I said the Bucks beating the, the Panthers and the Raiders would need to lose to the Chargers. I don't know why some of these outcomes are important like Detroit or Seattle, but I thought it was interesting nonetheless. Uh, this New York Times website is where I found this, so if you want to check it out, you can. Thanks for the videos. I appreciate it. Uh, one of my guys has sent me this too. So yeah, I, I appreciate it. I um, Second seed. Now, something to think about. Um, obviously, the higher your seed, the higher your home field advantage. But this year, just like last year, uh, only one team gets to buy. That's it. Only one team gets to buy. And with only one team getting to buy, I feel like the uh, the other seeds, they don't really mean as much. I mean, it's nice, to, again, home field advantage, as much as you can. It's great. Um, but even like the, the first seed, it, it, they can only be one. 
Next question came from my guy Rico. He said, what's up in Graven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. I believe the Ravens really need to clean house. And we all know that Greg Roman, a.k.a. Mario, needs to go, in my opinion, for the simple fact that his playbook is predictable and bland. Uh, Don Martindale for his defensive laziness and poor tackling ability. But it shouldn't stop there. Oh. All right. So, um, well, Wink, Wink ain't out there making the tackles, but something that's important. Uh, one of my guys, I was just talking to one of my guys a couple days ago, and he was asking me, like, man, what, what are these cornerbacks learning when it comes to tackling? Because he looked at the Anthony Averitt play where Anthony Averitt got injured, his ribs got injured, and Anthony Averitt, I thought, watching it live, I thought Anthony Averitt just dropped the shoulder low, went for uh, Uzoma's legs, and that's how he tried to take, take him out. But he really threw his body into him, and maybe he just missed, I don't know, but he threw his body into him and that knee, like, it, Uzama's knee collided with Anthony Averitt's body and then broke his bones. Um, so it was just poor, um, poor technique. So it's important that guys, that because this is where coaching comes in too, it's, it's important that guys are learning the proper techniques on how to tackle but whole nother conversation but anyway he said it shouldn't stop there QB coach as well well that would be James Urban um, he said I feel that LJ is in need of a Hall of Famer QB coach to teach him about leadership patience timing and the fitness trainers and nutritionists as well because it's clear that they are out of football shape weak and slow excluding the receiving group uh, tight ends running backs and quarterbacks and finally hard-headed I mean hardball for his he said that not me uh, for his praising other teams off of our bad plays and mistakes. His selfishness and lack of faith in his defense. Oh, so my guy Rico is ready for everybody to be like the end of the videos and be out. Um, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, w one thing that's interesting, because uh, you know those, them little Twitter spaces, those things can go crazy. Um... But I, I, I've, I've heard people ask the question. I want to ask the question to Team Keep It Clean. Um, they ask, what, what is Harbaugh's greatest strength as a coach? What's Harbaugh, what is Harbaugh's greatest strength as a head coach? And for anybody that's listening to this video, I, I pose that question to you. And I, I just want to see the response. Um, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll follow up with this later. But I just want to see the response without saying anything else, but I pose that question to you all. What is John Harbaugh's greatest strength as a head coach? Please answer that in the comments section. I, I want to see something. Next question came from my guy Dominique. He said, Hey, Raven, I just got finished watching the Bengals game, and defense looked worse than I thought they would. Cornerbacks getting cooked all game, and uh, we never got to stop the whole game. My question is, do you think we can survive with our defense playing like this? No, nobody can. Like, you could have the best offense in the world. No, you can't. If your defense just give up another touchdown over and over again, no. Unless your offense is just, they, they capable of having a shootout, and, a, and like a real shootout, the whole game. If it, Like a defense that doesn't force not one point, that's crazy. But again, you got to remember the context too. We ain't have really anybody out there. A lot of people injured, a lot of people on COVID lists, lost people during the game, so it, it was tough. But no punts at all? Yikes. Uh, he said, I would say it was just more in who we had out there today than it was coaching or play calling. What do you think? Okay, so I, I, I should have kept reading your question before I answered it because you said the same exact thing. Uh, his next question, he said, um, another humbling loss we just witnessed. Uh, I really didn't expect much from our defense, but that was just a little too much that we gave up. Moving on to the Rams game, uh, for as far as covering Cooper Cup. Uh, my question is, do you think Wink will double him for the game and let everyone else try to beat us or play it straightforward? A couple weeks ago, Wink said Adams was one of the top two wide receivers in the league, but not two. Uh, but we really are ready to face the number two guy, in my opinion. What do you think? Wink, in this game, um, he's going to have to be humble. He, he is, he is, he's going to have to be humble because this... Cooper Cup, he ain't just no no average wide receiver. He's not. Uh, Wink is going to have to be willing to, but you still got OBJ too. You still got him as well. So, um, and I think ooh, Tyler Higby too. That's a tight end. But anyway, um, you're gonna have to respect those wide receivers. Don't you don't need to add any fuel to their fire, especially like. It, 
if if Wink had Marlon, uh, I was about to say Marlon Peters. If he had Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey and Tavon Young, Anthony Avery, Jimmy, if he had a full load of his cornerbacks, all right, I could understand. All right, well, no, we ain't gonna double team this guy. We no, da, 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 oh yeah, he ain't got no gold jacket. No. If you had all your guys and you were talking like that, okay. But you don't. And you like, it almost makes you look bad. Even though we, we people with context, we understand. Because we know the Ravens ain't got nobody out there right now. As far as the secondary. We know that. But as far as the media and stuff, when you talk like that, um... It it, it, it it puts you in the public eye like, man, this dude talking reckless and, and that's how he, they, his defense backed it up? Oh, boy. So, Wink just, he's got to be humble this game and realize like, hey, our secondary ain't in good shape. They ain't been in good shape all year long. Um, and it's only got worse every week. Uh, so, it's important that um, whatever you can do to not make him go off. He's going to get his. He gonna, he, he's going to get his. But if you can contain him and don't let him go crazy with it, that will be much better. Next question came from my guy, Terrell B. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well, of course, with you and the fan. Appreciate you. I'm not making excuses, but as my pops will say, have you ever heard of the movie The Replacements? I'm really tripping off of the hype the Bengals are getting uh, off the beatdown that they gave the, I don't know who was on the field, Ravens. Uh, no one was surprised with, that, uh, with the loss, and we have one week of practice and practice squad players playing against first string offices. My question for you is what do you think would happen if the Bengals played a healthy team with a starting quarterback? Um, I will never know. Uh, but I mean we saw last year but again last year was a different Bengals team. They ain't have Jamar Chase. Now they did play a healthier Ravens. They played a much healthier Ravens uh, earlier this season uh, and they still beat them down. Now, we were still missing a lot of people, and we missing a lot of significant people, uh, but the Ravens were a lot healthier back then than they were now, and they lost, what, 41-17? This game, they lost, what, 41-21? Something like that. But, um, so Beng Beng Bengals still, like, they, they still, I think, would have, uh, they would have commanded some respect from the Ravens as far, even if the Ravens would have won, I think the Bengals still uh, would have brought it. But that's the thing about football, man. It, it, it is always next man up, and it's, it's almost like no team is ever going to be 100% healthy, especially going into the, uh, the 16th, 17th week of the season. Like, no, no team is going to be completely healthy. Now, Ravens, them be, they are, no team is supposed to be completely unhealthy like they are, or they were, and they still are. Um, but nobody's going to be, like, all the way right. Uh, so you just... I, I think moving forward, you just hope for health. You just hope the Ravens can be healthy. You hope whatever regimen that they had going on this off season, even if it's just flukiness, that, that it don't happen again. Um, and you, you just hope that they're very uh, careful, um, very careful with, and, and not overly careful. Because if you overly careful in football, that's that's dangerous in itself. If you overly cautious and whatnot, okay, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. And you can start overthinking stuff and second guessing, and that's not good at all. Um, but you just you just hope that when the Ravens do play the Bengals again next year, or even if it's this year in the playoffs, I know some people have been thinking, oh, Ravens might see him, but Ravens got to get there first. Bengals got to get there first too, but Ravens got to get there first. And Ravens need a lot more help uh, than the Bengals would. Um, but hey, we'll see. You, you never know. Craziest stuff can happen. If Ravens sneak off one against the Rams and then the Chiefs beat the Bengals, Chiefs would have that head-to-head -head tiebreaker, but both teams would be 10 and, uh, well, no, 9 and, uh, I don't even know. I don't even know Ravens record. What are Ravens, 8 and 7? So, yeah, Bengals are 9 and 6. Ravens are 8 and 7. So both of them would be 9 and 7. Um, Bengals will have the tiebreaker, but then if Ravens won the following week two against the Steelers and then the Browns beat the Bengals, the Ravens can get the AFC North. So, you just you hope for health. and Because these two are going to match up. Whether it's this year, it probably won't be, but you never know. Uh, but it'll definitely be next year. You just hope that it's a healthy matchup.
Next question came from my guy Eric. He said, Yo, Ingram, hope all is well. Just wanted to get your thoughts on Tyler Huntley's future. As you may know, Snoop is in a contract year, which has me wondering. I don't think he's in a contract year. I think they could actually hold on to his rights next year, too. So he doesn't have to go anywhere. They don't have to do anything with him, and he could remain a Raven. So the ball, because he's an, he's an unre, he's a undrafted free agent, so he would be like an exclusive rights free agent, something like that. But whatever it is, the Ravens, they, they hold the power, not Snoop. Uh, but he said he's in a contract year, which has me wondering if he will be returning as a Raven next season. Okay, answer that question. He said, this upcoming draft class doesn't have much talent QB-wise, which might have QB needy teams being extra aggressive in the free agent market. This leads up to the question, do you think we will bring back Huntley? And if we don't, what team do you envision picking him up? Um, but yeah, so I think Ravens will definitely bring him back for sure. Um, but I think what they'll do, uh, if they get the right offer, the, the right offer, then I think they'll be like, all right, Huntley. Go do your thing. Not from Steelers, though. Uh, but um, I could see Washington, maybe, because they, well, who they got right now? They had, I think, Fitzpatrick and Taylor Heineke. So Washington's a possibility. Uh, Green Bay, depending on what happens with Aaron Rodgers. But they, they got Jordan Love, though, so no, not Green Bay. Um, you got the Broncos, because they got the whole Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke situation. They obviously don't favor either either one of those two quarterbacks. Uh, so, yeah, I, somebody out there. Um, and he said, personally, I'd love to see him go ball out for another team next season as a full-time starter, preferably for his home team, Miami. Uh, well, Tua's been doing his thing there. Uh, so, we'll see. But the other half of me wants him to stay so that we have a reliable backup in a situation Lamar were to be out. As always, hope you have a great rest of your day. And just like Tyler Huntley might be next season, I'm out. I, I love that man.